The Tale of DVD Interactive Let's look to a time before Titus Interactive collapsed, but when I was in Southern California. And yes, I was still working for Titus Interactive at that time. I met the woman that would become my wife, Catherine, in Southern California. We quickly had stars in our eyes of each other and of a greater, better life that we could make together. We aspired to unite our passion to innovate new ideas and products. A friend of mine over the years also worked for Interplay and then Titus like me, Doug Brandon. He had lost his job when Titus shut his doors for good, like me as well. And so, with the end of Titus, we three conceived to make common DVD video movie players into interactive DVD video game consoles. Of course, DVD video players are not video game consoles. They have limited interactive capability, simple chapter and language selection and maybe subtitle and director cut buttons. DVD video players were intended to let players select where on the video they wanted to start playing from and what audio tracks and subtitle text they might display. That was it. Nothing special. However, DVD video player specifications in the hardware include a few data registers and a primitive programmable script language with commands of operators and operands. It had low-level DVD capabilities as well that you could control, like telling it where on a track sector byte video or audio or data or subtitles should be streamed from. Importantly, the script for DVD video players allowed direct manipulation of the registers and it had Boolean operators like AND, OR, exclusive OR, and NOT. These may not seem like a lot, but they unlocked the kingdom of games for DVD video players. Catherine and I set out to create the first technology and the first interactive DVD video game in the world. It was surprisingly easy to reverse engineer and figure out how DVD videos worked under the hood. Once I accessed the detailed specifications from a Russian dark web source, okay, yeah, I still knew how to get around as a hacker. You don't forget that quickly. In candor, I also obtained for a few review purposes, I believe, probably most DVD video authoring packages of the era so that I could understand what they did and how they worked. Seeing how existing DVD video packages created and packaged program scripts and formatted and laid out DVD video discs, it was apparent. I knew how to create my own authoring package. I could replicate what I understood and I understood it all. My package though was crude at first. It comprised of an Excel sheet with instructions pointing to art and video files and how they should be interwoven together for interactivity to create a game. Doug took on the role of producer and he sought out potential publishers for us to meet with. First, we made a test game using Disney's movies. We called it Saving the Magic Kingdom. It was cool and we showed it to Disney. Catherine created the visuals, the visual effects, transitions, etc. using prosumer editing software called Vegas Video and a prosumer audio package called Cool Edit. She made flashy screens that counted up scores. The host would claim things out loud, screaming right and wrong in hundreds of different ways. The game's host would cast praise or insults to reward and goad players and compare their performance against each other according to their score. That's right, there were up to four players in our games. The DVD video trivia game was smart. I wrote and evolved the tech and authoring process and tools. I wrote trivia questions, converted art and audio and text assets to DVD video formatted assets and program chain scripts. I like to say that I was both the cornerstone and air traffic controller making sure that all the parts landed successfully. Never before could an everyday dumb video 
player offer an interactive talking host that independently tracked and talked to each player with unique dialogue and tone according to their performance and compare them to other players. Again, that's right, we succeeded in creating a four-player quiz show game called Saving the Magic Kingdom, and it would run on any DVD video player in the world. But it would never see the light of day because Disney Interactive's greedy, self-centered attitude got in the way of us. Disney was so impressed that they stole the idea. They spent years creating their own tech to do what we brought to them. They refused to license our tech or let us make the games out of blatant conceit and hubris. Disney did not save the Magic Kingdom that day. They burned it to the ground. Disney sucked that day. They stole our idea. Using the same technology, we offered interactive DVD video visual teaching tools for word to shape matching, basic math, and all sorts of educational games like Sesame Street. Much like we demonstrated the Saving the Magic Kingdom prototype to Disney, we presented our Reading Rabbit and Math Wizard interactive DVD video game to LeapFrog. After all, they made physical reading and spelling electronic toys and games, so we thought they would love to deliver the same experiences, but on DVD videos at a far lower cost of goods. We recommended a custom DVD video universal remote control with big simple buttons that very young children could use without inadvertently pressing DVD remote control buttons that might mess up the experience. LeapFrog loved the idea so much that they too stole the idea and did it themselves. They too burned a lot of time trying to copy our tech. They even made the very custom DVD video controller for young kids and toddlers, just like we suggested. It was evident that we were onto something, but it was equally evident that we were great creators and innovators, but we did not have Steve Jobs to ink the deal for us, and we were constantly being ripped off because we were not lawyers. And most importantly, we allowed ourselves to be ripped off because we trusted people. We did not want to make any more demos, but managed to get a meeting with Hasbro on the East Coast. We met with their vice president of research and development and a team of producers, designers, and engineers. They had a parade of people asking all sorts of questions. It seemed like they were more interested in how things worked than what we were presenting. We knew they wanted to understand the technology, but our goal was to pitch a product to be published and impress them with how much we could adapt the experience or make new experiences using the tech that we showed them. Hasbro proved to be just like Disney and LeapFrog. They stole our idea and spent years creating their own tech variant and did ultimately author their own interactive DVD video games. You are likely seeing a pattern now. Well, we presented to Mattel as well, and like every other company that we demo to, they stole the idea and made games themselves years later after their own teams could attempt to duplicate the tech that we showed up with. What all of this proved to my wife and I is everyone will rip you off if given the chance. There is no company that will not steal from you if they can get away with it. I learned that showing people how things are done, revealing your technical secrets, merely empowers those people to clone, copy, or steal from you. It is a bad idea to share anything without a lot of legal framework and systems in place to protect you. That's tragic. Trusting people was and is a bad idea. Undaunted though, we persevered and we designed our own original trivia game 
in the irreverent style of You Don't Know Jack computer game series. We dubbed our game, Are You All That? The DVD interactive game. It was a flagship quiz show for every DVD video player in the world. It had over 300 hours of original gameplay and the game would run on 62 million household DVD video players. Catherine created the visual effects and transitions using the prosumer packages I mentioned, Vegas Video, and Cool Edit. She made flashy screens that counted up scores. The host explained right and wrong answers in all sorts of ways. The game was great. I wrote and evolved the tech and authoring process. I wrote tons of questions, lots of video formatting, like I said, etc. And finally, I was the voice of the zany and the wacky quiz show host, Dr. Know-It-All Brown. Well, we found a Canadian DVD video publisher called Digital Leisure based in Ontario, Canada that had published a DVD-I video game called Dragon's Lair. It was an interactive movie game. Not trivia, not multiplayer, but it was truly innovative. Digital Leisure fancied itself as the underdog of DVD video publishing, and so it saw interactive DVD videos as a way to stand out in their catalog and get noticed. They did not seem to care how well Are You All That, or Ayat as we eventually called it, sold. It was just a catalog differentiator to them, something for sales reps to talk about. Ayat sold, but not that well. It had no marketing or advertising. It was a line item in their catalog and a talking point to kick off negotiations. Catherine and I, well, we were duped into believing that we had a genuine publishing deal with Are You All That? But no, it was not the case. All of our DVD interactive work went for naught. It may have been a shining star of technology and fun for a while, but it cost us time and money to make. And only the thieves that stole from us ever made money. DVD Interactive and its demo games and its published retail game, Are You All That?, were not commercial successes. They did pioneer an entirely new genre and tech for DVD video players. They paved the way for Mattel, Hasbro, and many others to make a lot of money from stealing our ideas and tech. As I reflect on the experience, I am happy for the adventures that Catherine and I made together trying to create the games and sell them. We bonded and had high hopes and dreams together. Catherine and I had a last chance tilting at the freelance windmill of our dreams with Doug Brandon at our side. Are you all that will always be a fond memory for the time I was able to work alongside my wife on a big dream. There is magic in sharing dreams and aspirations with someone. That magic of dreams and aspirations is even greater when combined with the synergy of love and passion and creativity of a partner. I had all that, and I have all that, with the woman that is all that, with my wife, Catherine. And we together will have our memories of our misadventures and adventures, creating and publishing DVD Interactive and our plethora of interactive DVD demos and our released game, Are You All That?